Hello. How long does an EV battery last? Does an EV depreciate more than an ICE car? Is an EV more likely to catch fire? And are EV drivers who charge at home being subsidised by poor people? Are people no longer interested in buying a new or used electric vehicle? And if you're a company car driver, how much tax can you save if you drive an electric vehicle? I've got some verified facts and figures from reliable sources on these subjects, so I hope you can stick around. Hello folks, I'm Nigel. Thank you very much for watching today. I do hope you can subscribe and like, and please take a look at some of my other videos. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell. I like talking about owning a Tesla Model 3 that I bought in 2021. But did you know how long an EV battery really lasts? We have quite a few in the UK that have driven over 450,000 miles. A taxi driver and also a YouTuber called uh, Auto Alex Cars. He drove a Tesla Model S that had done over 450,000 miles down to Land's End. And it still had a very, very large range. Uh, the video is called Hypermiling, uh, my 450,000 mile Tesla. In America, Teslas have been driven for over a million miles and they've been in the US longer than the UK and the roads are much longer and bigger. My own degradation of my Model 3, I've calculated that it will last over 400,000 miles. Uh, but because of the degradation curve that sort of goes down quite sharply initially and then levels off, I think it's going to be considerably more than the 400,000 miles. And Tesla say the battery will only degrade 12% in 200,000 miles. I think the negativity around this comes from the fact that the very early EV batteries had quite a short life. And there were some examples of people, uh, the early adopters, who had uh, some big bills replacing batteries. But that's no longer the case as battery technology has improved so much. Uh, it's quite an old story now. I looked at the most depreciating cars in the UK, and this is from U Switch Car Insurance. They say number one is the Peugeot 208, and that is an electric car. Second, the MG ZS, um, that is also electric. The Audi A3 is uh, petrol, diesel, and a hybrid. The Peugeot 3008 is electric. Kia Sportage is petrol, diesel, hybrid. Vauxhall Mokka, petrol, diesel, electric. Ford Cougar, diesel, petrol, hybrid. Vauxhall Corsa, so it doesn't say E, so I assume it's diesel or petrol. And the Skoda, Karag, diesel or petrol. There's no Teslas on the list or Model 3s. And the point is that MG are on the list, but please don't let that put you off buying one. They make three models. It may be the later models were that much better than the one listed here. Same with uh, Peugeot, Audi make lots and lots of different types of electric cars. And of course, it doesn't say whether it's petrol, diesel or hybrid according to the list. And the list will change and in another three months it could be completely different which means it's a great time to buy a used electric car. There's never been a better time. It used to be the case they almost cost as much as a brand new one, but that's no longer the case. Oh, and did I forget that Hyundai Kona is electric hybrid or petrol? I don't plan to sell my Tesla. Depreciation is irrelevant and it's no different to really any other car. A Tesla is the only new car I ever bought and uh, all the others have been second hand. And at the time, there was very little difference in the price. So, but if I was buying now, I'd pretty damn certain buy a used one between 15 and 20,000. Is a ICE car or EV more likely to catch fire? So the UK Fire Service estimates there were around 100,000 vehicle fires every year and records in 2023 show only 239 EV fires. That's a quarter of a percent. Swedish contingency agency reported that petrol and diesel cars are 20 times more likely to catch fire than EVs. And in America, the data from the National Transportation Safety Board reported that battery-powered vehicles catch fire 
less than gas cars. Hybrid cars are more likely to catch fire than an ICE car or an EV. EV drivers who charge at home at night are being subsidised by Certainly not the case because at the night there is a surplus of electricity. Uh, wind turbines are still spinning round and very little electricity is being used than compared to during the day. Um, the wholesale price of electricity in the UK is under 6p a kilowatt hour. I pay 9p a kilowatt hour and no one is subsidising my electricity. Octopus Energy are still making a profit after me. It's a bit like, um, if those that remember, maybe some people have still got them, the storage heaters, cheaper at night, you download the electricity and it keeps the house warm for the rest of the day. It's no different from that, although people tend not to have that so much. So, are people no longer interested in buying a new or a used EV? Well, here's a graph from 2018 to 2022. It shows petrol cars in blue and it shows in green diesel cars. And you've got plug-in hybrid and you've got battery electric in the grey. And you see quite clearly how the blue is declining. The green, diesel, the blue for petrol, green for diesel is declining a lot more. And of course, the area that's growing the most is battery electric. And to a certain point, uh, hybrid electric. So that's from 2018 to 2022. So looking at the data from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders confirms that more than 41,000 uh, electric cars were sold on the used market in the first quarter of this year. That's a 71% increase in the year before. And who is it says that no one's interested in new and used cars? And also the on the diesel uh, is down 13.8%. Company car drivers, they do a lot of miles and they pay a lot of tax. Tax you'll pay on a Audi A3 uh, is £224 per month. And if you drive a Tesla Model 3, you will pay £13 a month. Another comment is time is money and I haven't got time to spend charging. And of course, most EV owners charge at home, so they leave every day full of charge. As a representative, you have to do many other things as well as driving. You have to phone customers, phone the office, phone colleagues, communicate. It's a rare day that you can drive from customer to customer and not have to do calls like that, if only that were the case. And so you do see a lot of reps in the Tesla superchargers, guys in smart suits, jackets, doing their work and frankly because the superchargers are so quick there's probably not enough time so for those people who say haven't got time to charge a rep or someone in business is, who has more than just driving from A to B is making use of that time so time management is a great thing and when the car is charging you're putting that time to valuable work and it's definitely not wasted I get a lot of comments on my channel mostly two types the EV owners who pretty happy with their car and give me facts and information how much money they're saving and how good the car is to drive. Occasionally there's a negative but overall they're happy. The second type of comment is that tells me I'll need a new battery in 10,000 miles, car will be worthless in a couple of years time, that sort of comment. These are terrible. <laughs> they also point to the fact well it's different for me because I'm retired I'm a fanboy and I have a new religion, the Tesla EV. Um, these are people who have run out of any facts to support any argument and they resort to insults. Also, EVs do not cause potholes. Heavy vehicles cause potholes. EVs are only for the elite. And of course, nobody's taking away your freedom. You don't have to buy an EV. This is really to explain, like when I was first looking and I looked for 18 months because I was saving up the money to buy one. I didn't just go out and buy one and I wasn't going to go for higher purchase or finance. Um, but people say that you're taking away my freedom. No, you're not. You can drive a diesel. I drove one for almost 50 years polluting the planet. 
now I've got a choice and I'm using my choice, not the government, to, uh, who, to tell me whether or not I drive an EV or not. And I think um, my freedom is very important and I've decided not to use poisonous diesel anymore. Thank you very much for getting this far. Hope you can subscribe and like. Please take a look at some of my other videos. Uh, hopefully see you next time. Don't forget to use your reusable coffee mug wherever you go as there's far too much plastic in the ocean. We don't want to add to it and most of those cups are never recycled. Thanks very much and I'll uh, see you next time. Drive safely. Bye.